This is one of a series of online conversations being held from the Global Knowledge Conference in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. A series of projects has been conducted across Asia designed to bring appropriate technology methods to the world of distance education and to compensate for the fact that internet-based online education is not universally efficient yet. Particularly innovative has been work done in the use of the universally accessible cell phone. I'm talking with Angelo Ramos, who will tell us about the MIND project for education and community purposes in the Philippines. I'd like to just give you a short rundown on this project that we've had in the Philippines and Mongolia. Basically what we did is to conduct a research on using a specific mobile technology, actually the simplest one, which is the short messaging service or the SMS. As uh, was been mentioned, this is a very ubiquitous technology with the fact that you know most people in Asia, particularly in the Philippines, have mobile phones even from from all you know from all social classes, all of them have mobile phones and in the Philippines, we have a so called texting culture and because of this texting culture that we've developed, the cost of mobile phones can be very, very cheap as well as uh, the SMS services and on average an SMS message is around two US cents so it's significantly cheaper than a voice call. Uh, these are some figures about Philippines and in our country at least at least up, up to uh, 400 million SMS messages are being sent every day so that makes around an average of 2,300 texts sent by every Filipino holding a mobile phone and it's the same in many countries in Asia, like in Singapore, China, the rest of Asia, in Europe, for example, in the United Kingdom, uh, sending text messages already quite common there and it's been used extensively. And I've also realized that uh, although in countries like the U.S. and the Canada, fewer, a few years back, SMS wasn't being used that much, but right now, at least in the United States, uh, there's been this growing trend of people using SMS or text messaging, so the use of SMS is rising, particularly due to TV shows like uh, American Idol. Well, uh, working and living in Canada for the last 30 years, I can uh, vouch for what you're saying, Angelo, because I was staggered when I first started traveling around these Asian projects four years ago to find how much activity there was then in the use of the cell phone and the use of SMS. In Canada and the States, we talk about developing mobile techniques but, as you are pointing out from these figures, the level of familiarity with texting in North American countries is far behind the familiarity that all sectors of the community have with the cell phone in the Asian countries. Your work at the Malawi Foundation, the work of Felix Lidrero and his colleagues at the University of Philippines Open University have been very pioneering in terms of SMS cell phone applications for distance education. Well, we've done a research project, which we've done uh, Project MIND, which is short for Mobile Technology Initiatives for Non-Formal Distance Education. So we are basically using mobile phones and SMS to deliver uh, blended learning materials in the non-formal education sector. So we basically focused on out-of-school youth, adult learners, who uh, we felt had needed extra time for education and for those who wanted to get more education specifically on topics like mathematics and English. So basically we developed a system where first for the hardware we developed a learner, an SMS learner management system which is basically a server that handled the data which contained learning objects and questions that will be sent to students via SMS and that the students can also reply using their own mobile phones to this server and the server will give them instant feedback on their responses whether it was right or wrong. We've installed a uh, GSM data terminal in the computer which has the SIM card that basically makes the server a big mobile phone. So for the software, we've installed SMS software and this software handles a lot of uh, data including student information, the content of the quizzes, user keywords, help messages, user and quiz reports as well as other facilities that students as well as teachers can use. For this study, we've gotten 146 students from the Bureau of Alternative Learning Services of the Department of Education in Manila. And they're all non-formal students, as I've said, out of school youth, with approximately the same uh, percentage of male and female students ranging from age 15 to 23. 
So these students will would have taken the accreditation and equivalency exam given by the Department of Education last February. And if these students pass this, uh, this exam, they would have the equivalent of a high school diploma, which can put them back into uh, the formal school system. So, of course, most of them should own a mobile phone. And for the project, they were given prepaid credits of around $2 to participate, as well as a printed module on English and uh, mathematics. After we've implemented this project, and implemented the modules of the students. These were the feedback that we've gotten from them using focus group discussions. Many of them found this to be a new and exciting way for them to learn and uh, this is a very novel method for them and they found the modules that we produced, the printed modules at least, very easy to understand and use and very good value for money because in order for a student to complete the two modules on math and English they will only spend around 40 pesos which is around one dollar right now and this is significantly cheaper for them if they take an, uh, a mobile course rather than for example spending money on uh, public transportation to go to school so that will take them at least twice that amount so this is very cheap for them and this enables them to do uh, modules at home or, uh, and at work so this is really for students that are on the go and this has prepared them well for the accreditation and equivalency exams and based on this project, we've learned that this specific technology has a potential as a blended learning tool for non-formal education. We've asked the students if they would want other topics to learn aside from math and English, and they suggested a lot of different topics like science, our native language Filipino, and they suggested more technical subjects like computer education and all that. But of course, the nature of SMS is that it's asynchronous. So students didn't start the modules at the same time, mostly because since this is very independent type of learning experience, students tended to start the modules and answer the questions at their own pace. But there were also times when students had to answer the modules all at the same time, so this created problems with the SMS server. So a lot of information coming into the server resulted in some delays, and at least in the pilot phase, we had some bugs to deal with. So what you've described, Dr. Ramos, in the use of SMS techniques can serve countries such as we're seeing on the map of South Asia. Many of these countries don't have good internet connections, so many of the Western world's distance education methods don't work well yet. The figures for Sri Lanka, for example, very busy developing internet connections and internet-based education. But at present, only about an average of, I think, less than 5% of the population has internet access. But what you're doing in providing SMS techniques helps to provide people with interactivity from remote parts of the country. And the Sri Lankans are working with you in the development of these SMS techniques. Specifically, one which interacts with the web. You can interact with a web page from your cell phone. You can influence the display. So there we now have good SMS facilities that overcome the problems if some people don't have online access. Well, I hope that uh, this project will scale up. I'm really seeing that mobile technologies are the way forward for distance education in Asia. Internet connectivity is steadily increasing here and computers are getting cheaper, but I would recommend that we should link SMS modules with the web. We need to strengthen the support system, it's not only for students but also for teachers technical assistance that they might need in terms of putting in content. As a distance education tool, texting can be very helpful in bridging the educational gap in developing countries since mobile phones are significantly cheaper than computers and more user-friendly, at least for the majority of the population. And there's no steep learning curve, especially for beginners, unlike in computers. But because of this potential, there's a real need to address the lack of SMS-based courseware, specifically for non-formal education, but likewise for formal education. We hope that in the future there will be more concerted partnerships in terms of research and development, in developing more courseware, and in training more people to use this technology. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Angelo Ramos, for joining us in this discussion at the Global Knowledge Conference in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you also to the International Development Research Center and its Pandora Project for sponsoring this creative work.